Hello, uh, today we shall see the building of a bobbin on a rowing frame. Last time we saw the construction of the bobbin and uh, today we are going to see how actually a bobbin is built. So before we begin, let us just take a small introduction or a look at the rowing process or the rowing frame as it is known as. Just let us take a look at this video. The purpose of the roving operation is to reduce the sliver to a suitable size for spinning. The drawn slivers are pulled over the creel and entered into the drafting system. Simple drafting system consists of three pairs of rollers running at increasing speeds. The fibers delivered by the front rolls of the roving frame are in the form of a thin ribbon. This ribbon is carried forward to the top of the flyer. It is then threaded through the hollow tube and the presser finger eye and wound onto the bobbin. Each time the flyer makes one complete revolution, one twist is put into the roving. Roving are wound onto the bobbins in layers. Since the presser of the flyer does not rise and fall, the space between adjacent roving wound on the bobbin is determined by traversing the bobbin slowly upward and downward. The winding revolutions of the bobbin are reduced inversely to the increase in diameter of the bobbin. For a semi-automatic doffing system, both the removal of full packages and insertion of empty bobbins are done manually. After the empty bobbin is inserted, the machine wraps the free end of the roving onto the bobbin surface automatically, and a new cycle starts. Full packages of roving on the bobbin holders of the transportation rails are pushed by an operator towards the ring spinning area along the rail. So we've just seen... Um the general passage of uh, the material through, through the rowing frame. So now let us go ahead and take a look at how the bobbin is actually built via the drive that is given. Uh, so this is the rowing frame passage, um, just a pick of the rowing frame. This is a conventional uh, rowing frame as you can see. The passage is as the material comes out of the front drafting um, rollers, it is passed through this flyer through the eye of the top of the flyer and then it passes through the hollow leg and then it wraps around the presser arm which, which we shall see in details later on and then it is wound onto the bobbin. So this is the general passage. The sliver is drafted uh, to form a rowing and is passed through the top of the flyer, the hollow leg of the flyer, wrapped onto the presser and finally wound on the rowing bobbin. So with this uh, we go ahead and see the various types of flyers that are available. There are three types of flyers, a spindle mounted flyer, closed flyer and top mounted or suspended flyers. So spindle mounted flyers are simple in design, drive and piecing but the automation is slightly difficult and these are normally used on a conventional rowing frame. So this is how it looks like. Closed flyers uh, reduce the spreading of the flyer legs at high operating speeds. Um, it was used with flat sacco lovel on the rovematic. So it was a closed type of flyer where both the legs, um, you can see it is closed and during the rotation of the flyer at high speeds, um, there are no uh, chances of these legs uh, spreading apart. Uh, so, but this was only used on this particular machine which was known as a rovematic. Then we have the third type of flyer um, which is a suspended flyer. And these are mostly in use today, uh, which facilitate automatic doffing operation. And um, as you can see, this is the type of flyer, which is uh, suspended flyers and they are driven from the top. Now let us see the drive to the flyer and the bobbin in the case of um, spindle mounted flyer. That is the, normally you can say it is the conventional rowing frame. The spindle is simply a support and a driving element for the flyer. The spindle is conical and slotted at the tip the pin in the flyer top gets engaged with the slot and they both rotate as a single unit. So as you can see here, this uh, this is the flyer and the flyer sits on the uh, slot on the spindle. The spindle acts as a support for the flyer and as the spindle rotates, um, the flyer would rotate along with it as a single unit. So this is the spindle and that's the flyer. The spindle is a long steel shaft mounted on its lower end in a bearing and supported in the middle by a vertical reciprocating shaft like a jacket on the spindle 
that supports the bobbin. So on this particular um, spindle that we can see over here which supports the flyer, there is a small, um, you can say a jacket sort of a thing on which the bobbin is supported. So as we already have seen that bobbin and flyer uh, ha must have uh, a difference in speeds so that uh, the roving is actually wound if any winding has to take place which we have seen in the earlier lecture. So to give that particular difference in speeds um, and uh, of course we are going only for bobbin leading types. We have seen last time why we need to go for bobbin leading types. Um, so with that background we can say that the, the, this is a bobbin leading rowing frame and there has to be a difference in speeds between the bobbin and the flyer. So definitely we need to have a different drive, a separate drive, one for the flyer and one for the bobbin. So this is how they are driven. On the bobbin rail, um, bevel gears fixed on the longitudinal shaft drives the individual bevel gears of the bobbin support. So whatever bobbin support you can see, they are driven by um, bevels which are there on this particular longitudinal shaft um, which are fixed onto the bobbin rail. So whenever this bobbin rail um, uh, moves up and down, it is it, there is a, a gearing which we shall see later by which this bobbin rail moves up and down along with uh, this bobbin rail. The, all the bobbins on that particular rail will move up and down and that is how the coils are laid adjacent to each other. Um, the flyer and the spindle are not moving um, vertically, only the bobbin is made to move uh, because um, the, uh, the bobbin rail would be given a movement in the upward or rather the vertical direction. So this is how on an old uh, rowing frame or a conventional rowing frame the flyer and the bobbin are driven. So this is the bobbin rail and um, now let us just revise a little bit. We have seen this slide earlier, just a repeat slide. It is a um, it is about the requirements for building the rowing bobbin. Let us just see what are the three most important requirements to build this kind of a, a tapered rowing bobbin. So the first requirement was that a bobbin speed has to be reduced for ending as the bobbin is being built up layer by layer. In the bobbin leading case we have seen that as the bobbin uh, diameter increases the bobbin speed has to be reduced with each layer. Then the second requirement is that the flyer that lays the rowing on the bobbin must be reversed every time it reaches the end of its lift. So we have also seen this that as soon as one layer the one layer is laid the next layer for the next layer as soon as um, the bobbin rail reaches its end of the lift the bobbin rail must be reversed and it should again move downwards. So it's a continuous movement upwards and downwards till the entire bobbin is built up. And the third requirement um, to get these tapered ends is that every time the lift that is there must reduce layer after layer. So with these uh, three requirements in mind, we should always uh, look at the gearing diagram as how we can fulfill these fulfill this, uh, three requirements uh, so that we can build this particular rowing bobbin. So there are, uh, so we need, need to understand that the flyer has got a fixed uh, drive because it is a constant speed from the start of the bobbin to the end of the bobbin and the bobbin will actually receive variable drive. So on a conventional rowing frame, let us see how it is done um, through this particular gearing that is shown here. So drive to the flyer and the bobbin uh, comes from a single motor of the machine. So you can see this is the single motor. The drive to the flyer comes through a normal set of gears which is like this. It goes from the motor to this particular machine shaft as it is known as and then it we go to the other end and um, it via a set of gears we can see that this particular speed is transferred to the uh, spindle and through the spindle to the flyer that is not shown here. And then uh, we have to see that the drive to the bobbin which is a variable drive that we need to give to the bobbin is coming via a set of cone drums and differential gears. So how that is coming again from the machine shaft but on the machine shaft we have this particular differential box and uh, this speed first uh, goes to the differential box and uh, via the differential box again um, there is um, through this machine shaft what you can see is that at the end wheel, this end wheel drives the cone drum and from the cone drum, this particular drive uh, comes to this uh, bottom cone drum, from bottom cone drum to this particular um, wheel which is a part of the differential box on which is um, fixed on this machine shaft 
so it is a sort of you know um, uh, motion which is coming uh, if we carefully look at it the first the motor drives the machine shaft as usual and this machine shaft end wheel will uh, be responsible for uh, driving the top cone drum then the bottom cone drum and via the bottom cone drum this this speed is coming to the differential box which is which is there on the machine shaft and we shall as we shall see later uh, this differential box uh, somehow manages to add the speeds that uh, the machine shaft receives basically and uh, along with the uh, it will add it to the uh, speed that it receives via the cone drums and then this particular speed is then further passed on uh, to the bobbin as shown here so this is how uh, the speed to the bobbin is coming and uh, let us see in detail how it works so go ahead and see uh, the cone drum and the differential gear drive um, just uh, briefly over here the reduction in the speed of the bobbin is achieved by the shifting of the belt on the cone drum so on the conventional uh, machine this is how uh, now the you know focus is on the top cone drum over here the drive comes from the top cone drum to the bottom cone drum and it goes further to this particular differential box and further on it is passed on to the bobbin as we have just seen uh, but the main uh, thing to be noted here that this particular belt has to keep on shifting uh, so as to um, give a reduced speed to the bobbin so as we can see this is the top cone drum it has got a, a, a variable diameter from one end to the other so whenever the belt is uh, situated here this is the driver so it will be the least uh, uh, it will be having it will be uh, the number will be coming in the numerator driver upon driven so uh, this driven since it is the highest diameter over here when the belt is at this particular uh, leftmost side it will be um, giving uh, this particular shaft it will be passing on a speed which is uh, lower whereas when the shift uh, the belt is here at the right most uh, end of the cone drum the driver is um, at uh, is the higher is at a higher speed and so therefore driver upon driven this particular shaft will have a, a speed that is lesser than this particular one um, so in this manner the belt is uh, continuously shifted after every layer from the uh, right to the towards the left as, as layer upon layer is built up on the bobbin so the bobbin speed is maximum at the beginning of the bobbin build and it goes on reducing as the bobbin reaches its full bobbin diameter so a uh, main thing to note here is that on the um, conventional rowing frame it is achieved through a set of cone drums one must note that it is required that there is some kind of mechanism needed here to shift the cone drum belt as a bobbin is built up now um, we must remember that um, it can't be manual that you know every uh, on every machine somebody shifting the belt on the cone drum so therefore there has to be some kind of mechanism which will help this uh, particular belt to be shifted as soon as one layer is built or every after every layer this particular belt has to shift to reduce uh, a proportional amount of speed for the bobbin so with this we come to the building mechanism on the conventional rowing frame um, the shifting as we just said uh, which is required for the cone drum that is achieved by uh, this particular building mechanism as you can see there is some mechanism here which uh, helps achieve this particular um, aim where the um, belt is shifted so on the conventional rowing frame the building mechanism shifts the cone drum belt as the bobbin is built up so you can see here this this particular rack and pinion mechanism um, which is a part of the building mechanism will uh, shift the belt as the layers are being built uh, the building mechanism also reverses the bobbin rail at both the ends of the bobbin when the lift is complete so we had seen that uh, there was a second requirement and that was of uh, reversing the bobbin rail as soon as um, the bobbin rail reaches the end of the lift and this also is done by the um, uh, achieved by the building mechanism and that is done through the if you can see this building mechanism it is done via this uh, bottom part of the building mechanism uh, which drives this uh, set of uh, plate bevels which alternately come into into position and drive this particular uh, bevel here and um, as we can see um, so 
this particular bevel will then uh, go on to uh, drive the uh, rack and the pinion which is driving the uh, you can say the bobbin rail so then every time this particular plate bevel um, uh, is made to move rather this particular shaft is made to move towards the uh, right and the left so every time um, um, when it when there is a time for reversal this building mechanism brings one of these bevels into position and that is the reason why this particular drive that is coming via the cone drum uh, via this particular uh, train of gears r e s t uh, and d over here when d is in uh, contact with u at that time uh, this particular shaft will rotate uh, in one particular direction let us say in in the, in the upward direction and um, and rotating in this manner so um, it will be the the particular speed will be transferred via a b c and d wheels to this particular rack in uh, in one particular direction maybe say up and therefore the bar rail bobbin rail will be moving upwards uh, after after um, it it does it's time for reversal um, the building mechanism again via this uh, tail which is seen over here it will push uh, it will remove u out of position and put the second plate bevel into place and because of that this d will start driving this particular shaft in the opposite direction maybe say downwards and uh, therefore the same um, direction is passed on to this bobbin rail and the bobbin rail will start moving downwards so this is how this building mechanism actually controls the upward and downward movement of the bobbin rail um, we shall see this again building mechanism later on um, in our uh, future lectures so this was just a brief overview of how uh, things work on a, a conventional moving frame also uh, the third task that has to be performed by the building mechanism is that of the reduction in the lift after every layer that is laid on the bobbin so that reduction of the lift um, also is achieved by the building mechanism which again um, shall be explained in detail um, in the future lectures so in short the, we, what we have seen now is that uh, the drive to the bobbin um, is a variable drive which has to reduce after every layer and uh, therefore it has to come through a, a set of cone drums uh, via a differential gearbox we'll see the function of the uh, differential gearbox also later on so why that speed has to come through the differential gearbox so the speed uh, for now we can just say uh, the speed to the bobbin comes from uh, through a set of uh, cone drums and a differential box and the bobbin is uh, driven and is given a variable speed and a reduced speed as the layers are built up and on the other hand um, the shifting of the belt as well as the reversal of the bobbin rail and also the reduction of the lift uh, for the bobbin to form the tapered um, ends is uh, all the th all these three functions are done by the building mechanism and um, this is just a brief overview of how this particular uh, mechanical way of uh, drive to the conventional rowing frame is done so um, if you look at the entire uh, gearing on a conventional rowing frame this is how it looks uh, it seems quite complicated um, and it is that way um, so we can see now the complete picture here where um, the drive comes to the spindle via these particular wheels and um, the spindle is driven that means actually the flyer is driven and the drive to the bobbin comes via um, uh, the cone drum and um, so this is the cone drum this is the machine shaft end where a twist wheel is there from here the drive goes to the top cone drum then the bottom cone drum and via all these um, uh, gears here what you can see is it is passed on uh, to the uh, via this particular differential gear box from this end it goes to the uh, bobbin here so this is how the bobbin is driven through the cone drum and the differential gear box then we saw we also saw that this building mechanism does the function of shifting the belt here this is done by this particular rack and pinion over here at the top of the building mechanism and from the bottom of the building mechanism this particular tail that one can see um, this will bring um, alternately these particular uh, plate bevels into position because of which um, 
this particular um, uh, shaft on which this U um, uh, reel is being fixed, this particular shaft gets an alternating um, up and down or clockwise or anti-clockwise um, rotation and because of which um, through this set of gears A, B, C and D we can see that the uh, rack and pinion which is attached to the bobbin rail gets its motion up and down motion. So this is um, a short overview of how this entire gearing on the conventional rowing frame uh, really works. So with this um, we come to the drive to the flyer and the bobbin in the case of a suspended flyer. So um, we must be wondering why things have changed uh, on the modern rowing frame. Uh, earlier it was a spindle mounted flyer and um, now it is a suspended flyer. So as we have already mentioned earlier that the suspended flyer allows for um, easier doffing, um, easier automation of doffing rather. So uh, let us see how else this uh, suspended flyer will help us uh, in making the entire uh, complicated gearing that we just saw into a much simpler um, drive. In case of a suspended flyer, it is driven by gears at the top instead of the bottom. So uh, this is how it is. The bobbin is, uh, has been removed and um, on this particular machine you can see only the flyers and they are uh, driven from the top rather than uh, the earlier way of driving it. Um, we have seen earlier that they were uh, fixed onto the spindle um, via a slot and a pin and uh, the spindle which is driven from the bottom would drive the flyer but unlike that here it is driven from the top. So next we come to the bobbins. The bobbins mounted on the bobbin rail are driven by the spindle. So earlier the spindle was uh, actually uh, flyer and spindle were the same thing but now um, the the bobbin uh, on which it which uh, it is mounted uh, that is particularly known as a spindle here. So this is how uh, they work as a uh, work together the flyer and the bobbin. So now uh, let us see the modern rowing frame drive. It is much much simpler than what we just saw. So in this uh, since the flyer is driven from the top um, it there is a separate uh, motor which drives the flyer. There is another motor uh, two which drives the bobbin. So we have separate drives for the flyer and the bobbin because of which uh, we can give uh, whatever variable speed we want to the bobbin and a reduced variable speed can easily be um, given to the bobbin here. Then what we see is that there is a third motor which drives the bobbin rail. Uh, we have seen that uh, to make that uh, bobbin shape here, the tapered end, what we need is the bobbin rail must be continuously layer after layer move up and down and after every layer the lift should be reduced. So both these uh, functions are achieved by giving a separate drive to the bobbin rail and by simply controlling this particular motor 3 over here, uh, we, can, we are able to achieve uh, the entire uh, objective of the building mechanism. So we can uh, right away do with the, do away with the building mechanism as well as the differential box uh, which would have which we would and also the cone drum which we would otherwise require for driving the bobbin. Then there is a simple um, another simply another motor which is a fourth motor which will drive the drafting system. Uh, so this is how the actual uh, gearing works. So as we can compare and see and immediately we can make out that uh, just by looking at the gear, gearing diagram that the rear conventional drive was a more complicated one because it was mechanical drive whereas here now since we have replaced the entire uh, mechanical uh, uh, drive to an electronic drive system. So we have four motors which do the same job and um, it is easy, easily achieved by this particular uh, four motors and uh, the gearing has been much much more simplified. So with this uh, we come to the end of today's lecture. We have seen um, two different ways of driving the same rowing frame but the ultimate uh, aim is to get uh, the particular shape of the rowing bobbin which we have seen in the uh, first lecture the construction of the rowing bobbin. So in both uh, whether it is mechanical drive or electronic drive we have tried to achieve or rather um, get the bobbin constructed 
the way we would like to have it and uh, so that it can easily go on to the next machine that is the ring frame and um, uh, for uh, for doing that we have seen both the drives today and with this we come to the end of this lecture thank you